So it feels like uh, giving a mini product keynote. Um, so we're really glad to give you an intermission to the World Cup, uh, a day full of artificial intelligence research and applications, and uh, an amazingly sunny day in London. So I'm sure all of you are very happy to be inside in some air conditioning. I certainly am. So uh, I'm going to be your guide today. Uh, for those of you I haven't met before, I'm Nathan Benesh. I'm a technology venture capital investor. Um, I started this event a couple of years ago as a means to build more community in applications and research in AI. Um, and we run a variety of events throughout the year. This one and another one called London AI. Of course, the team uh, producing this is definitely not me. I just have the short straw and have to do the presenting. Um, so we've got a fantastic group um, led by my sister Joyce, who's in the audience, who I can't thank enough for this. <laughs> Um, David Rolden, who's also at the front from Google. Uh, again, we wouldn't be here without him. And we've got an amazing couple of announcements that he has. Uh, and then uh, Aaron Archer at the front, who's been uh, with us from the very start. So thanks again to all of you. So our, our mission is super simple. Um, we want to build a community for entrepreneurs and researchers who are involved in accelerating both the science, crucially, and the applications of AI technology. And to do this, we've um, created a, a, a really interesting uh, segment of the startup ecosystem, the big technology ecosystem, and then also in academia. So this is a segment of some of the companies that are represented here today. We have roughly a third, a third, a third in each bucket. Um, so I really encourage you to take the time to look to the person to your left and to the right and get to know each other because it's very, very likely that you've probably worked on something remotely similar uh, and have similar interests and things to learn from one another. And um, we should all be super happy uh, to, to be here. Unfortunately, our venue is not big enough to cater for the amount of demand uh, for people to, to come here. So we both have a YouTube live stream and uh, only 300 spots to attend. We've seen around 3x growth um, since we started. So it's, uh, it's super exciting uh, to see the momentum that we have. And what I'm most excited about is the fact that actually 85% of you are, are new. Um, only 15% of you are the diehard uh, followers. <laughs> and so I think we have uh, a lot of room to grow. And of course, uh, we have a fantastic community of people who have really achieved exceptional things and, and really put both the UK and the technology ecosystem really on the map. So we have uh, Simon, who's back uh, here since he spoke last year. He raised an amazing round from Sequoia and is probably building one of the most exciting technology companies out there, really putting the UK on the map. So thank you, Simon, on behalf of everyone. Um, of course, we have Dave Palmer, who gave his first technology talk last year. Um, his company is purportedly uh, a unicorn now. Um, leave it to him to confirm. <laughs> Um, Jan Eric Solem, who presented around street level mapping last year, he raised a $15 million Series B to use those maps to train autonomous vehicles. Uh, Raya Hansel, who gave a fantastic lecture last year on catastrophic forgetting and trying to overcome that for neural networks. Uh, she published in PNAS, and her paper was cited over 150 times. Um, going back a couple years, we had Benevolent AI in 2016, and, and they're now pushing a couple of drugs through to clinical approval. Starship was a ground delivery robot we featured in 2016, and they've closed a $25 million financing and actually have their robots in the streets of Palo Alto delivering people's lunch on campuses. And uh, of course, we had a, a panel with the head of product at Adyen, which uh, went public a couple weeks ago at over $12 billion of valuation in Amsterdam. And uh, last but not least, uh, one of our very first speakers from a couple years ago has now joined a fantastic company that you'll hear a lot more about, so I won't steal the thunder here. Now, of course, there's been a lot of activity in the startup ecosystem and larger technology space, but one of the main things that's changed over the last 12 months in terms of the narrative, which we'll actually get into in one of the panels today, is the fact that AI has actually reached the national stage. We've seen a couple of announcements from the French government, notably from the Chinese government and from our own in the UK, that are really trying to put AI at the center of the agenda and, to varying degrees, um, want to actually become um, you know, the dominant national player in the world. And what that's meant, at least in, in the US, is we start to see more intervention from governments in terms of blocking foreign acquisitions of key assets that relate to AI. So on the graph I'm showing you um, the number of investigations that have been um, started by CIFUS um, over the last couple of years. Um, 
that basically involve blocking those kinds of acquisitions. And the right, you see the effect that this has had on M&A by Chinese companies in the US. So we have AI kind of dominating the national stage. Uh, we see increased uh, protectionism, and we see significant advances in research. And against this backdrop, we see an insane compute requirement for progress today. This is a graph uh, in log scale where, from OpenAI, where we're showing you the compute requirement to train a state-of-the-art neural network, AlexNet, in 2013 on the bottom left of the graph, and AlphaGo Zero, DeepMind's um, uh, amazing neural network that can play Go. And what you see is that there's actually a 300,000 times fold increase in the compute requirement, which starts to tell you that actually progress in the field is basically writ limited by finance, because finance buys you machines. And increasingly, a lot of the best people in the space are, for sometimes very good reason, actually working in large technology organizations. Um, on the left, we show you a, a graph from Tencent, which charts the number of employees uh, they estimate uh, in AI at each one of these big technology companies. And on the right, we show you um, the percentage of ICML papers that are accepted um, for the conference uh, next month in Stockholm that are accounted for by Google or DeepMind authors. So I, th I feel like 13% is quite, quite a lot. And so against this whole backdrop, we think that there is room for a new foundation, a non-for-profit foundation, that essentially exists to equalize some of the participation in the space. So we've set up this year uh, the RISE Foundation. And this is our, our URL with some basic info. And the mission for the foundation is to increase access to education, in part by running events like this one and resources, uh, specifically financial, uh, in AI to help advance the greater good for everybody. And so to do this, uh, every single one of you by attending today has contributed. Um, we've raised 35,000 pounds this year through this event. And we're going to recycle 100% of all that money into research grants and open source project grants for people in our community, but actually anywhere in the world. And. And then the, the really nice thing is our community is actually getting a lot stronger. And so some of our advisory board members who will help us build the profile of the foundation and help us evaluate grants and also give support to, um, to, to the people who actually win the grants are some of our alumni speakers. And so we hope that this will, uh, this will really accelerate in the future as our community grows, as we raise more money, as we give more opportunity to more people to get a shot. And so along those lines, um, we have, again, this year, thanks to David Wald and his team at Google Cloud for Startups, we have free credits, subject to a couple of eligibility criteria, um, for all RISE attendees. So um, if you want them, you can take a picture of the slide, scan the, scan the QR code, or go to this link, which is bit.ly RISE2018, or memorize David's email address. But he's also here at the front. Um, and of course, if you're starting a company, thinking about doing anything with regards to financing, privacy, data protection, IP, going public, M&A, you guys sitting at the front, uh, Aaron Archer, he's uh, at Cooley, and they've worked on some of the more exciting technology companies in this space, including Improbables Financing, selling um, SwiftKey, working for Uber, and Zymogen, et cetera. So you're in really good hands with him. Um, and so today our speakers have done pretty exceptional things. They've built and scaled products for billions of users. Um, they founded and sold really large technology companies. Um, they've published really important influential research and also developed tools that some of us, actually many of us, have probably used. So with that, uh, this is our program. Um, I'm extremely uh, indebted to every single person who came here. Uh, they came here on their own accord. Um, Two thirds of them are super jet lagged from San Francisco and New York. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I, I can't thank all of you enough for, for actually attending.